October 9th. Uh, I'll go over the agenda quickly. First, we have public comment, and then the director of the Burlington Technical Center is going to give us an update on the 24-25 budget process. We'll discuss the community meeting on November 16th and have an update on the first draft of the 24-25 budget. Then we'll approve monthly warrants, approve previous meeting minutes, and set the meeting date and agenda for the next meeting. So to start with, do we have any community comments? Okay. All right, so um, first up we have Jason Reed from the Burlington Technical Center, who's going to walk us through the budget process for the BTC. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, and John kind of characterized this as an informal process, so I didn't um, prepare a presentation, but if you have some specific questions at any point, please feel free to um, let those be known. Um, right now, I'll just give you a little background information just so you know. Um, currently this year, MMU has 15 students at the Burlington Tech Center. Um, we're at an enrollment of a 223 students, so it's just just under 7% of our student body is, is M our MMU students between both first and second year programs. Um, the concentration, 15 is not a huge number uh, in terms of doing percentages, but the largest concentration uh, seems to be in the arts program. About a third of the students are in one of the two arts programs, and then it seems to be just a single student in many of the other programs, both medical programs, um, advanced manufacturing, which we're now referring to as design, engineering, and fabrication, uh, criminal justice, aviation. So uh, MMU is across all programs, but in small numbers. Um, so at this point, going into FY25, BTC is still in um, somewhat of a stabilization process and after having been disrupted for a couple of years after the closure of the buildings and getting ready to um, build some programs at the new high school and tech center at 52 institute road which is the former high school location um, and then we're in the process of um, renovating a building at burlington international and we're in the design um, build process there in the initial phases of that. So um, the goal, primary goal um, going into this fiscal year is to um, continue to stabilize programs. We had a dip in enrollment um, and especially last year our enrollment dipped um, and then a consequence not just of enrollment but of having to be in so many leased spaces um, is our tuition went up considerably the last year. And so my primary goal, in addition to kind of stabilizing programs and looking at enrollment in some of our lowest enrolled programs, is to do everything we can to keep tuition in check so that our sending districts um, don't continue to see increases in tuition. Um, some of the challenges with that right now uh, are we have uh, the last year of the current teacher contract that is um, the final year of that is FY25. There's a 4% increase in teacher salary schedule for that. And then as you probably know, some pretty significant health care increases um, coming up to the tune of 16 plus percent. So that's going to present a challenge in terms of looking at tuition. So we're pretty early in the process of budgeting with our business office at the Burlington School District. So working with Executive Director Lavery, um, our real goal is to start looking through the budget um, and not just doing broad brush strokes, but really doing a, a line by line assessment of where we can shave some costs um, and, and still offer quality programming. But um, start to start to shave some costs so that we're not continuing to increase that that tuition. Last year was an 18% bump, um, and I, I don't want to see that again. Um, and I'll just pause right there and see if you have any any questions at this point. Um, yeah, Jason. Thank, well, first, you know, just big picture. Thanks for taking time uh, to meet with us. You can hear me? Yeah, I'm sorry. There's just background noise in this building, so I'm <laughs> just, oh, you're um, fine. I can hear you. 
Okay. I feel like if I yell, Google will still quiet me down. Um, but you know, thanks thanks for uh, joining us tonight. And this is a little bit of a uh, I don't want to say an experiment, but something we we've never done before as a as a board and a finance committee is is to reach out to you and to you know just make sure that we're um, you know, a little bit more in informed and uh, potentially you know in the future engaged with the with the process because you know it's a it's not the biggest item in our in our budget but it's there mm -hmm. and when we're um you know reviewing the budget internally and then also with our uh, with our community right we want to you know make sure that we're uh you know aware of what's what's driving the increases so um you know just thanks for giving us your time and an opportunity for us to ask questions yeah absolutely um i think that collaboration is really important and and uh, i'm sure you have plenty of students going to cte as well um, so, yeah, that's great. Edie? Hi, thanks. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate you being here. Nice to see you. Yeah, you um, too. I was wondering, I'm assuming that none of the programs that the MMU students are um, participating in are programs uh, that are also offered in Essex, right? Because Essex would be closer for our students. And I'm wondering, and my question is more about, are you looking at duplication of effort as part of your cost um, containing efforts, right? Yeah, so um, there is uh, one student in a, in a duplicate program, um, and I think Otto has come up at the, the regional advisory board meetings prior to my time at BTC as being a program that has um, a, a duplication of program, if you will, um, but of course the difference is our half day model versus a full day model at Essex. So, um, in, but to your point, um, I am looking at that and considering it, um, in thinking about moving into new buildings, um, they won't necessarily replicate what we had in, uh, both our leased spaces and what I know that they had at the old building. So part of the consideration of what can be moved has to be what drives enrollment for us and because we survive on that enrollment, of course, um, which the auto program does have a pretty significant enrollment for us, but also what can be um, built affordably with the space limitations we have because we're not constructing a new building. At BTV, we're renovating an existing building. That's the only cost-effective way to do it. And the great thing about that building is um, there's $10 million of a federal grant that Senator Leahy had earmarked and the previous director and the aviation director here had um, gotten that award. So that grant money will help that, that the building of facilities cost is not passed on to people, right? So, um, I wandered a little bit there. Did I get to your question? It, it, it's it's a maybe right now in terms of duplication of program. And auto is is the one that has a duplication, um, in name at least, and in some of the content there. John, you're muted. Jason, Burlington is going to be a, a district that's advantaged by Act 127. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering how will that and, that, and they'll be advantaged, you know, pretty significantly. Um, will that will that influence the BTC budget at all? Um, it, I think it, what it's going to come down to is if this current legislative session, depending on what the, the, the upcoming legislative session, if there is a change in some kind of funding model for CTE centers. Um, I think if, if a new formula is developed through this legislative session based on the, the APA study that was done last year, um, it very well could, but at this point, I don't, I don't foresee that having an impact on our budgeting at all um, for Thank our you. sending districts. Thank you. Yeah. Do 
any other questions? So as I said, we're, we're oh, go ahead. Sorry, Heather, go ahead. I'm not sure this, hi Jason, I'm not sure if this is directed at you or just general. Um, does it cost us more as a district to send students to the tech programs? Just wondering, out of curiosity. I'm new to this board, so. Um, more than what's, what, more than what, Heather? More than just the average cost of educating one of our students if they were to stay in, you know, at the high school. So, in the sense that money will be passing out of your district to us, right? Um, and um, that dollar amounts based on our tuition that we can announce and set our regional advisory board will review that probably in two months. Uh, and so in that regard, yes, um, the transportation that is provided, I know that's come up a lot in previous regional advisory board meetings. Um, there is state re reimbursement for part of that transportation cost to the district. Um, I can't speak to if that covers all of your transportation costs, um, but that reimbursement is available through the state. Yeah, Thank you. we do get some revenue. It doesn't cover all the costs. That's a good question, Heather. And I, I guess the other way of asking that, and I don't know if anybody knows the answer based on how we account for the, the cost, but uh, regardless of whose money is moving in which direction, I would, I would imagine it does cost more uh, to educate somebody in a CTE program than in a traditional program. Is that a fair assumption based on the expenses that CTE uh, requires versus uh, traditional or regular, whatever the term is? I think that's fair to say, uh, Kevin, for sure. Um, programs, uh, because of specialized equipment, because of uh, specialized training, a lot of we talk about industry recognized credentials in career and tech ed and students be able, being able to earn those. A lot of those tests have fees associated with them. Most of those tests have fees associated with them. Um, so an example of that is if you take an emergency medical technician test, um, you pay for that a couple times with the written and the practical version. So there's there's testing fees involved. We do continue to pursue grants to help to offset costs. So the state makes um, what they refer to as a time grant available to help with some of that more expensive specialized equipment so that it's not always getting passed on to our tuition and therefore to sending districts. Um, we have access to, to the Perkins grant. It really kind of guides all of our measures that we're accountable for to the state. Um, the state enforces the requirements of that legislation. And so, uh, for example, Perkins this year for us currently is $226,000. Um, last year, a, a, a third allocation came out. So we had um, an additional, um, I believe it was $28,000 off the top of my head. We may have access to that money again this year. That will be um, that remains to be seen, but um, spend a lot of time pursuing those options to offset offset the costs. Um, but no, you're right. The, the, some of the programs are incredibly expensive with the, the specialized um, equipment. With that said, from a student standpoint, because we're able to embed college credits um, at really no expense to um, our tuition or sending districts students, sometimes leave with the equivalent of a semester's worth of college that um, is saving them to get started um, in, in their college or career path. So um, there are some, some and that, that money is paid through Perkins, but to the colleges, uh, this community college of Vermont that, that provides those programs. So um, there are ways that the, the costs are kept in check, but Any other questions? Yeah, just sorry, uh, just one more. So thinking about the next steps, you said in a couple months, uh, you do your uh, announced tuition calculation that gets approved by the uh, RAB. 
Is yep. that that based on the budget that you are developing now for next year and your um, forecasted enrollment? Correct. Yeah, and um, I'm glad you asked that. That's a, a great question. So yes, it will be um, based on our budgeting process that we just really just kind of scratch the surface on getting started. Um, and what the state will do is, is give us um, what our six semester average is of enrollment. And so it's not the immediate enrollment. If, if you think about, you know, we have 223 students, that means we're going to get tuition for 223 students. It will be based on um, what our six semester average is from the state. Last year we were at 137, and I suspect from our dip in enrollment last year that, of course, will go will go down some, um, and so that will be another thing for drive us. Yeah, that'll all things equal. That'll drive the tuition up a little. That that would that formula would, and that's that's another place where Ooh. this kind of more precise line by line approach is is. Uh, hopefully going to help us to to limit those okay. increases so uh nicole what what do you put in our budget you know given that the uh announced tuition doesn't get a you know set until december or january mm -hmm. i have used pretty similar to last year understanding like that costs were increased last year. I'll take a look at FY23 actual and probably need to bump up a little bit, um, but just be as conservative as we can. And based on the number of students that we know are currently attending, just make a best guess. Does the timing line up for that announced tuition that gets agreed to to go into our final budget? I don't, remind me when that is announced, Jason. Um, it, it will, let's see. We're a couple drafts in, I think, at that point. Yeah, so this is, uh, let's see, we're at the end of November. We should be very close by the end of, of December. Okay, yeah. yeah, then we have time. And I apologize for not a more precise date. That's just my, my second round going into it, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it seems like it naturally or intentionally kind of lines up where you get that number pretty much locked in and then that's what the uh, price is going to be next year and we just have to figure out exactly how many we're going to forecast and we we multiply students by that and that's what the, the line item becomes more or less more or less okay yeah. <laughs> cool never we I don't think you know we've been doing this I've been doing this for a while I don't think we ever really dove into that ever it was just the number so uh, good to yeah a lot of those a bit more yep right <laughs> and i we have our regional advisory board meeting scheduled for the last week in november i believe ethan mauer is now the representative from mmu on the regional advisory board um so i'll see him at the, in the last week of, of november i'm happy to come back here at some point if that's helpful to you um, I can also, you know, if one of you wants to be a pathway or you want it to be Ethan, we can, we can communicate that way as well. I'm, I'm happy to do what you're comfortable with. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Okay. I mean, uh, sorry, Heather, uh, just to answer, like, maybe, I don't know if I'm answering them on behalf, but we've got a, like a couple interests, you know, that all kind of come together, but within our board we have a committee that's focused on regional collaboration um, mm -hmm. that's you know more looking at you know are we getting the most out of working together with our various districts around us um ethan's on that committee as as am i and we're, we're we are taking a focused look at cte um in in kind of a, a broader sense in, mm -hmm. in this context for this meeting i think it's you know, primarily we're looking at financials and understanding what's in the number and kind of seeing how things line up and what are the drivers. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I mean, it's from my perspective, I, I think uh, Ethan is a good a good con uh, conduit to uh, use your, your term. And, um, 
you know, we'll we'll see where this uh, where the discussion goes. But I don't at this point, just hearing how things are going in the process, um, we know a lot much. We know a lot more now than we have in the past, and I I don't know if there'll be a need to come back around for anything. But uh, it sounds like you're willing to to be there if that comes up. So thank you. Yeah, and if it's helpful for. Um... And I don't mean to imply you're not informed, um, but if, if that other committee on, on collaboration and looking at the role of CTE, if it's helpful for me to visit with that committee and, totally. and kind of go through the process, I'd reference Perkins and all of the measures that it has, that, that really informs a lot of what we offer for programming and then what the benefit is for students on the other end with dual enrollment credits, with industry recognized credentials and things. I'd be happy to walk folks through those pieces um, if, if that's at all helpful at some point. I could, I could run that by Ethan as well as you develop your agendas for those committee meetings. Awesome, thank you. Okay, Heather. Um, the, so this is uh, going back a couple. Uh, Nicole, I think you might be, able, might be the best person to answer my question. Um, do we, what do we do? Do we just guesstimate how many students we think might enroll, like incoming freshmen, and like leave a chunk of money for that? Or how does that work? Like, what if, like, we build the budget now, and like, what if suddenly next year, like, way more people want, are interested in the tech center than we initially thought in the budget? How do we compensate for that? Great question. I mean, we can really only do 25 right now with okay. the students we know who are enrolled and take a best guess at um, anybody who might want to be entering the program. I, in terms of our overall budget, not that it's not a piece, but it's, it's a smaller piece of it. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I don't think, you know, taking what we know and making an estimate for the next year is going to significantly change things um but there's a lot of it's just a lot of pieces of the budget where you just have to take the information you have now at hand and be as conservative as you can yeah maybe this would help too heather that would if if a student wants to go they can go we'll need to make it up in the budget so we don't say oh you know we didn't have this we money don't have a cap or anything yeah, yeah um nope so if Kids, students that are interested in uh, in it, and and we and they they enroll. Mm -hmm. And I and I think we get some. In the, I mean, freshmen don't have the opportunity to enroll, right? Um, so you get some some information, at, you know, at the high school level that probably somehow makes it to, to Nicole <laughs> to, to factor in. Yeah, Mike is pretty involved in that too. I mean, he helps us. We've we've done pretty well in general. John, um, I am now a MMU district resident, so I know I pass your house every day. I love um, it. I'm I'm I feel fortunate, and um, but I'm also guessing that weighted pupil is going to have <laughs> uh, maybe impact uh, you all. In a much different There's winners way. Winners and losers. Yep. <laughs> yes. So. But we're glad you're here. Yeah. Interesting times. I I did go to MMU. It was a number of years ago. I graduated. Well, that's great. Yeah. Where did you move to? Um, I moved uh, maybe a mile from the high school, right as you approach the village uh, of Jericho Center. Um, oh, nice. Before you get to the store. Yeah. We. Um, uh, moved in next to my in-laws, so we have some nice, nice family connection there. Well, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there no other questions? I know you, you're in the middle of a meeting, I believe, as well. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate you inviting me. I, I, I love the spirit, uh, Kevin, that you talked about with the collaboration with the, with the region, and let me know how I can help there. Awesome. Thanks again. All Thank right. you. Thanks, Jason. Good very luck. Much. Good session. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Take care. Thank you. Okay. So the next thing on our agenda is to discuss the community meeting on November 16th. John, do you want to take that? Could I start, Lisa? Sure. Um, so, so our postcard has gone out. Looks good. It's gone out to everybody. I mean, 
thousands of people. Um, anybody with a mailbox got one. Um, we've also, um, you know, it's posted on our website. It's posted on every website with a direct hyperlink. Um, you know, the, the plan is to offer some budget informational slides that include some priorities, real focus on, on, on you know, high level on students, because I think that's going to be you know, important. And um, then some historical data as well, such as enrollment, what our tax rate is, has been, what some of the big drivers are, and, and also weaving in there one slide uh, around um, 127. Um, we have, we've sent uh, FAQs, they've been in our district happenings. Uh, we have them posted on, on our uh, website on, in the budget section. We've also shared them with, you know, all our staff members. Um, it, just to give them some, make sure everybody is on the same page. And then, and we do have a, 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 some information too about what some of the big challenges have been, you know, in, uh, so far in the budget process, what some of the, you know, what some of the issues and challenges that are that we're grappling with right now, like health insurance, Act 127, um, inflation, you know, uh, the cost of goods and services and our contracts have gone up. So talking a bit about that so people have a, a good idea about what are some of the, the major pieces that are driving the budget. And then the plan is to have Nicole go through a, a summary of the of draft 1.5 maybe, or um, we'll get to that a little bit later. And then and and take questions. It really, we've presented it as in the past and, and in the postcard. What do you want? What do you want us to know? What do you want us to consider? You know, as as we're do, in the midst of budget development, I suspect there'll be some questions around 127 because uh, it is a really challenging change for people to fully understand. So really trying to stay at a high level with that. Um, and talk about the drivers and the and the priorities. Do you have oh. that one slide yet done? Which one? The 127 slide you mentioned. No. What What's your? Uh, how are you gonna How are you gonna do it? I'm gonna try to give like I have thought about it. I've I've started on. Um, I've got I've got some of the slides um, ready to roll. I thought about really keeping it as high level as I can, like, a, you know, a couple of bullets on just, here's what it is. And then, um, you know, it's the influence that could take place on our budget, you know, which essentially is, uh, you know, without cutting several millions of dollars, you know, we were, will be subject to the cap. And that's based on this year's budget so not not taking into account any increases into next year but taking our budget this year and applying some of the parameters of 127 we'd have to cut you know 6.5 6.6 million dollars do you think do you think you'll do it without talking about how students are weighted differently or yeah, that, no, I, I don't think you can. I think you got you have to put a that's got to be one of the bullets. I feel like as soon as one goes there, it's hard to stay high level. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. And I do, I've really grappled with this um, about how to because if you don't talk about it, it's just it doesn't make any sense at all. Um, so Maybe I would stay away from the numbers, like an ELL student is 2.49 and just say, you know, if you have more of, of these category of students, then you're advantaged. You get a higher weight and that increases your overall pupil count. But trying to stay away from like weighted and, you know, as much as we possibly can, because nobody understands that. 
Yeah. I, so, um, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, still getting used to that. Uh, uh, so the note that uh, Katie sent out, and by the way, Lisa, you or I need to, I think, put this on the front porch forum for Underhill. I already, I already, already did that. This Thank you. Last week. Thank you. But we should, you can send out the reminder this coming week. So I liked how the wording, I, I, I like the wording and I didn't like the wording, which is why I didn't immediately put it on the forum. I like that it didn't get into that level of detail, um, you know, but it, it, it talked about Act 127, um, but it was definitely slanted in that it said could drastically decrease the state's funding. Um, and, and that's, like assuming that we put forth a certain budget or, you know, I, I, I kind of liked the fact that we're looking at it from how much funding you get from the state and Act 127 could decrease our the funding that we get. And that, you know, keeping that very high level made sense, but I was a little bit taken aback um, with the, like the drastically part of it because we might do something. And that's also kind of like, well, some people might think that's a good thing. Um, you know, that they they want, you know, the budget to be lower and this will cause the budget to be lower. So we just have to keep in mind that we have constituents that, you know, some of them want to get all the funding they can into the school. Other ones, all I, I'm happy with anything that's going to get my tax rate lower. And if this is going to put pressure on, you know, the state system, you know, it could be a good thing. So we just, want to make sure that we're um, thinking about it from all different perspectives of our community and and the fact that we haven't yet decided and it's a longer term decision how our district is going to respond to this extra pressure can i respond to that so just two things one of them was from the um community engagement committee putting language in there that would get folks attention was important yeah. because um, we didn't want this to be one of the an opportunity for folks to hear and discuss and understand better that people ignored because it was just another post from the school board. And so that so, yeah. so the language got your attention and that's good. That was its yep. intent. Um, so I but but or and I don't know when you later on when you were talking, you said that there are folks who want to see um, money to schools decreased, or it's really not money to schools decreased, it's less spending in Vermont, less, right? Less, less spending or less burden on, on them. Yes. And so I think that's important, John, for your presentation, because this does not decrease the pot of money that goes to education in Vermont. It decreases the amount of money that goes to our district. And I think that's really important to highlight because this is not a cost-saving measure for the state. And so yeah. I, I don't want anybody to, to hear this and think that it is. Um, so I want yeah, I think that's a really good point, Edie, is that that's got to be one of the bullets. Because, and I'm going to try to craft it and, and, um, uh, and I, I'll try to share it with you before, ahead of time, this committee. Um, but the, it's not less money. You know, it, 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 they're going to make up with it it'll be made up by just reducing that base yield amount and that's clearly what the aoe has said mm -hmm. uh, i think you're right Edie. that's got to be it's not a cost saving measure mm -hmm. no it's, it's designed to be a more equitable spend of the money um it could end up having less money in the education fund because the advantaged districts could choose to decrease their taxes, which would be a um, which would put the state in a much more difficult situation to fund education overall. So this could one of the unintended consequences of this policy could be really bad for the state and for funding education in Vermont. Um, bad or good, I guess, right? It could it could require people to make different decisions and how they educate, but. For us next year, for this district, not down the road, it could be more expensive yep. for our taxpayers. For our taxpayers, right? To uh, to provide the same services, regardless of uh, cost increases, 
right? When we looked at it, same last year with different count, tax rate would increase. So our community would be taxed higher for the same services, which, which means if our goal was to not pass on the increase, we would have to reduce our spending, which would then reduce overall cost. So it depends how we react and how we as a community decide to react. Are we as a community going to absorb the extra cost so that we can maintain the same services? Or are we gonna say, I don't wanna pay anymore. You guys are gonna have to figure out how to get by with less funding. It'll be a lot less funding. So well, it's always gonna be, you know, maybe how much more are we willing to spend, right? It's not, we don't have those two choices. It's on that spectrum. And I think we're gonna, as a district, we've always, um, you know, been expected uh, to, to, to support education first and, and ask the community to support it as well. So we are going to lead with a budget that doesn't assume significant cuts are what the community wants and that we're gonna to try to maintain everything and continue to grow and get better at these areas where we need it. And it is gonna cost more, thankfully, no more than 5% more because of this change is kind of tapered. So the, the state is, you know, we, we have some grace period uh, to adapt, um, but, but that's gonna be our initial, you know, presentation to the community is, you know, 5% more. Go back on mute. So that's the that, that that's our plan to, to do as much listening as we can, take good notes, and be you know good listeners and and affirming, um, and try our best to explain. You know this is like uncharted territory um, for for uh, for us and and a lot of other people as well. And it doesn't even get, I don't even, I don't, I mean, we're not going to get into CLA or anything like that because we don't even know what that is, but that's a whole nother, you know, ball of wax. Uh, we'll be, we'll be ready. Okay. All right. Which brings us to the next state <laughs> <laughs> of, of draft one. <laughs> I'll take this one. So as you may have noticed in the agenda, there is no attachment. So I've spent a considerable amount of time in the last two weeks or so building. Um, I'm we're transitioning to using the budgeting module in eFinance because it's a really excellent tool and it's there and we should be using it. Um, we did not use utilize that tool last year. I was eight months in and just figuring out e-finance at baseline. So the module, the budgeting module is just not happening. So I spent some, a lot of time the last two weeks building the salary schedules for next year and the deduction tables and the numbers that I'm coming up with currently are just coming in a little bit lower than, and I know that sounds like a good thing, but they're just coming in a little bit lower than we'd expect them to with everything that we know so far. You know, we have negotiated agreements in place at six and a half percent. We have increases in health insurance at 16.4 percent. We have increases in property insurance of 20 percent. Um, so I just I need to take more time to comb through those numbers. And I didn't feel like it was worth putting them in front of you if I know that they're not where they need to be right now. So I apologize for that. Um, I, after meeting with John this afternoon, I found a few of the things which I think were salary schedule related that are part of my issues. So I at least know where I need to go in and fine tune some things. But um, again, low is good, but I don't think, we don't think it's realistic with all that we're up against right now. So 
more to come. I we will have more updated information for next week's community meeting. Low is good, but accurate is better. Is that what yes. you're saying? A hundred percent. Yes. <laughs> if anyone has questions like, you know, that you thought you may come into the meeting with Kevin, you're giggling. Maybe you have one. <laughs> if you have budget related <laughs> questions. We ask a question, Nicole. I, I mean, I, I, uh, you're welcome to throw them at me. Uh, not a question. I'll just say, um, you know, I'm, I'm a little, little bit surprised uh, that we don't have a budget to review at this this meeting. Um, that, for me, kind of hurts our our process quite a bit. And going into a, a community forum next week, um, a little bit less prepared than we typically are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, is uh, I wouldn't say the word unacceptable because that that's kind of like derogatory. But you know that we shouldn't. We shouldn't get to the point where we we don't have that you know that that review done in advance, but I I think it's uh, kudos to you and John to make the call. Um, you know that's really good leadership to be like this isn't worth the the time and it's something's not right and we have to get it right before we bring it you know to the committee here to review. So um, you know uh, is it so is it so okay question is it. When when will we be able to review it? Uh, is your target to to bring it to us at the community forum, or are we going to meet between now and then? What's the? I don't know, and I guess I'll let John or Lisa or whomever weigh in here. I don't think the intention was to set up another meeting, but it is my goal to get the information out to you guys, so you're not seeing it for the first time at the community forum. Yeah, that was what I was thinking that we would offer you a summary as soon as practicable mm -hmm. and uh, with like notes so that you can ask some questions um, prior to the meeting, giving you time to review it and you ask questions um, if, if you have them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, understanding that it's an iterative process, right? So <laughs> it's going to, it will, we're going to get more information as we get deeper into the the budget cycle and including the December 1 uh, recommendations around the actual formula, uh, which we don't can't really share with people now. So there'll be a lot that, of water that goes under the bridge over the next couple of months. But goal is to get it to you as soon as possible so you can take a look at it, analyze it and ask questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least I, I think there, you know, it's a draft, like you said, it's 1.5 or whatever going to the community. Um, I'm personally not too concerned about seeing it, you know, for the first time. It, we, we do say it's a draft, you know, and all of this. And then we, we don't actually start presenting the budget until after the board approves it. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm okay because we are where we are, but I think the expectation should be that the, this committee is able to review what it is before it gets presented to the community. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't disagree. Yeah, and we've, you know, in the that I don't either, um, Kevin, uh, at all. And you know, if you'll recall, you know, over the last three or several years, we've really called it like a rough, rough draft. Um, cause we don't, there's some information we don't have, um, and it takes, you know, a considerable amount of review and scrubbing to really, you know, find, um, all of the things that you want that could be in there, mm -hmm. but, but, uh, fair enough for sure. Anyone else? I don't envy the amount of work that you have to do to come through the budget. <laughs> I signed up for it. <laughs> okay. Um, can I get a motion to approve the monthly warrants? So moved. So moved. For a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So moved. And then. 
make it a motion to approve the meeting minutes from the last meeting. So moved. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 So it's unanimous. Thanks. And then the next meeting is Thursday. We've thoroughly discussed the the agenda. Um, is there any other business for we adjourn? Okay. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next week. Thanks. Thank Have you. a good night. Bye, guys. Yes. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have, have a good night. Take care. Bye. Bye.